it's finally, finally good to see you headed in person um, over the internet instead of the gray uh, picture that you <laughs> It's gray. It's so gray. There's so much more color. And I noticed you have guitar in the background as well. So yeah. that's cool. Let's see. Pockets. Alright, so. Um, I'm almost done right here. And we're live on the event page Sweet. right now. Okay, everybody, welcome to our fifth episode of How to Succeed in Architecture. Um, today we talked with Emily Bello, Marika McKeel, and Evan Troxel about the art of presentation. Hi, everybody. So <laughs> As always, I am here with Novedge. Um, Novedge is the leading online software store for design professionals, from architects to engineers, from filmmakers to graphic designers. We go to great lengths to find all the software you need so you can focus on your projects. Our website offers a parallel search and comparison charts with clear licensing information for over 8,000 products. So check it out, Novedge.com. Okay, so Emily, let's start, <clears throat> excuse me, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about you. Okay, um, I'm Emily Bello. I'm with EHDD Architecture in San Francisco. Um, we're a firm that does mostly um, institutional work, so museums, schools, libraries, um, that sort of thing, from the very small scale to the very large. Um, I tend to work on projects that have an educational focus, so I'm currently working on several local schools. Um, and just finished the new um, Exploratorium um, at Piers 15 and 17 downtown. Um, I'm excited to be here today because this is a topic I'm particularly interested in. I think um, how we as architects communicate our ideas is crucial uh, to how we practice. So, I'm excited. Great. Great. And let's see who's next here on my slides. Okay, Marika, it's your turn. So, tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Um, my name is Marika McKeel. Um, I am an architect in New York City. I started my own firm about three years ago, Studio MM. Um, so I'm probably going to be a different perspective in that I'm just one person. Um, I focus mainly on residential design. Um, and I guess in the city, that is a lot of renovation and smaller projects. Uh, but I've been able to do a few projects outside the city also, which is, which is great and fun. Great. And uh, we have an interview with Merrick actually on our blog, so we'll make sure to post that link again if you missed it. Okay, and then Evan, tell us a little bit about you. I think a lot of people probably watching this already are fans of Archispeak. Hi, I'm Evan, and um, yeah, Archispeak is one of my projects. It's archispeakpodcast.com, and I co-host that. And it's basically a, um, a podcast where we just kind of let people sit around the water cooler with us as we talk about the kind of the things that are normal to us in everyday uh, life of being in the architectural industry but um, a lot of people seem to be interested in what goes on behind the scenes we have a lot of student listeners we have a lot of professionals we have uh, we have a good audience so I co-host that with Neil Pan and Cormac Phelan and then um, like Emily I work in the public realm as well I do a lot of K-12 work and I do libraries and civic work as well at HMC Architects in Southern California. And uh, the other thing I do is I have a website called getmethod.com where I teach people how to use digital tools for design as well. Great. Okay. So we're excited to talk to you um, today. I'm Aurora Minigallo. I'm the marketing manager here at Novedg. And behind the slides, who will soon appear, is my colleague, Kevin Liu. Hey, everybody. <laughs> So Kevin will be um, following up with all the questions that you post on the event page. Behind the scenes, we have Barbara, who's reading all your comments and questions on Google+. Plus. So please send them right away, and Kevin will ask our experts um, today. So let me start with um, some questions I have. Um, so let's start talking about prospective clients. So we ha you have to meet people that are considering hiring you or your firm for their projects. Um, do you offer a free consultation? And jump in, you know, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll start. Um, I think, you know, we often um, meet with prospective clients. Um, sometimes, you know, if it's a school, for example, we'll do a campus walk with them. Um, I think it's really important to meet people in person and really figure out who they are, their culture. Um, oftentimes, we'll invite them into our office so they can see how we work and how we practice. 
Um, but I think it's important to sort of get out there and meet prospective clients. Great. And what about you, Evan? Yeah, you know, there's. You'd be surprised what architects will do for free to get the job. So, um, <laughs> so true. Or maybe, or maybe not. I don't know. But um, yeah, well, we do a lot for free up front. And basically, you know, there's there's a lot of times where we'll go into an interview. In fact, I'm prepping for one right now, and uh, we're going in with a lot of ideas because we we oftentimes treat the the interview like it's our first meeting because uh, we want to get to work you know we want to work on the project so we like to show them that we we're ready to work on this that's great and what about you America yeah that's a great point um, I definitely I definitely do um, go into the interview with with okay so how do we start and um, I've found that usually works pretty well with them just just getting to know me and getting right into it and giving me all of their ideas and feeling like uh, we're actually starting to think about what they want. So yeah, that's that's a great way. So it sounds like you already go there with some ideas right off the bat, right? Yeah. That all of you. Okay. Do you bring a team with you? Do you go by yourself, or do you have a team or anybody else supporting you during this initial presentation? Just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about everybody else here? What about you, Emily? Because you work at a larger firm. Yeah, I think it really depends on the project, but um, you know, we work within teams. Um, no one designer is designing the full project, um, and so we we generally bring a team of people with us. Okay. Yeah, I would I would say we like to bring a team of people who are going to be working on the project, so that mm -hmm. this prospective client kind of gets to know everybody that's going to be involved throughout the project. Because these things take years, right? Mm -hmm. So. They want to know who they're going to be talking to, and who's going to be handling design, and who's going to be handling, you know, all the different aspects. Yeah. So we like to we like to have a good representation of everybody at the interview. Um, and like Emily said, it does depend on the size. It really, you know, sometimes it's two people, sometimes it's six. People. Yeah. Sure. So how do you prepare for a presentation? I I asked all of you um, before this hangout, and you all told me that you prepare, you customize each presentation for the project and the client that you're meeting with. So right. how do you go about preparing? Yeah, I, I would say it's really tricky because um, you want to come to an initial meeting with some ideas, but at the same time, you know, often projects evolve out of a close collaboration with the client. So um, it's it's hard to propose too much before you really understand who they are and how they work. Um, so there's a little bit of a trade-off. You want to come with ideas, but you want to make sure that um, you're not sort of uh, coming with things, you know, before you really know who they are and how they work um, that, that may not work for them. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Evan, go ahead. Well, I was going to add to that. I think it's important to um, to the present. It, the meeting is about them. It's not about me. And so it, it's really you don't like Emily said. You can't show up with too much because that's all stuff that you're kind of proposing, and it, it's more about you at that point. And so mm -hmm. you've got to work with them. And you know, my sometimes my favorite way to go to a, an initial presentation is with a br a blank roll of trace and just sit down at the table and just start sketching ideas and talking while drawing and they just get a feel for kind of what this process is going to be like and it's really fun I mean because then you can say oh we can try this and we can try this and and, and they get an idea of how you work because if if they feel included there's a lot more ownership and they're spending a boatload of money on these projects so they want to feel they want to be a part of it yeah. That's a great point. So I'm really hearing like you want to bring ideas, but you want to give a strong signal that you're open to their ideas and and not sure. come in as I know what I'm doing and you know. Well, it's their money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Mirka, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, for me, it's a little bit different. Probably, um, I can present a lot of what I have done, and it's since I focus on residential. It's uh, therefore I'm presenting a lot of residential, and at the same time, that's it's not necessarily oh we'll do the same thing here, but it is a these are kind of ideas as well. Um, but yeah, the trace Evan and I talked about that the other day. That's I I may not do that on the very first meeting, although maybe I should. Um, but definitely once you're not even just working, but maybe the next one where you know they kind of have seen have seen you, you've gotten in. And then it's the okay. Let's go and and the trace. I think that's a great idea with the trace. I'm gonna definitely steal that one. 
<laughs> Great, fun. we're all learning already. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about the tools that you use. And I know you all use different tools in different situations. So how about we start with Evan? Um, do you want to talk about one of the tools you use? Yeah, I've got a few that I, if we have time. Um, the first one that, you know, like I said, I like to go into a lot of these just analog, but I also like to play with the toys and um, but usually those are digital and one thing that I like to do is try to get the project into the client's hands and so maybe this isn't a first presentation but you know there's lots of presentations throughout the timeline of a project and so one thing that I like to do and let me um, share my screen here is um, I like to use an iPad because it's something that I can put right into there hands and they can drive the the project and so um, let me turn this on here real quick. Okay, I see your screen. There's a lot, um, including me. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a, I'm gonna uh, be back here on the big screen until you find um, the iPad. But I like the idea of the iPad. I mean, that, that's great. Um, yeah, it's a great tool to use, and you can take it with you. Okay, now I see you're ready. So do you guys see my iPad on the screen there? Yes, we'll All see. All right. So um, basically, this is this is a tool that I've recently found. It's called Revisto, and um, their website is revisto.com. And this is, you know, we use SketchUp, we use Revit, um, we use a lot of different tools. And basically, this is um, a program where you can output a 3D model, and then what it allows you to do is you can see these little um, arrow keys down here in the lower left hand corner it's like kinda like a video game so the client kinda gets to look at their project and and they get to take it for a spin and wh when you do that when you give it to your client and then they they pick it up and they kinda already know how to use it because they've got kids who play video games or they play video games themselves um, what this lets them do is you should see their jaws drop and their eyes pop wide open because it's really fun just to get in there and they get to control where they're gonna look um, they get to fly around where they want to fly in and they want to go in and look around a building they can go in and they can just look around and that's really fun for them so that's that's one of my kind of favorite things to do is is just try to figure out a way to get the project into the clients hands so that's one that's great. So I'm gonna ask Mirka to to show one with us, uh, to share one with us before we get back um, to Emily and Evan. So Mirka, do you have uh, a tool or something you use? Yeah. Uh, nothing quite as cool as that. I thought <laughs> I was like, why are you asking me? Um, I use my iPad also, but <clears throat> excuse me, I um I have not used that tool on it, and that is very cool. Um, I usually just go in with, as I said, the my my past work or some examples of residential that I've done, and I'll show that on the iPad. And it's rather than printing something out where they kind of, it's like, okay, great, you know, now I've looked through it. What do I do with that? I always think, you know, if I have the iPad, they can look or not, or we just talk. So, same with so, the iPad. But. Yeah. So you show them pictures or videos of your um, previous work. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. And Evan, it was that. Uh, um, was that a model of something that you uh, prepared for that specific client? Is that a new design? Yeah, that's a community center. So that's the kind of client where there's actually like 40 clients. And, okay. uh, you know, so you've got four different committees with 10 people each on them. And, and so that's where it, I think, again, it really helps. It depends on the size. You know, if it's real intimate, I, I might not do something like that. I might just have a physical model and we can hold it up together and, and look at it you know like Mar America's there behind her on the wall you know it, just an analog physical model is something that's great for people to be able to hold in their hands but when I've got a group of 10 or 20 people that I need to show this to or it's a community meeting um, sometimes it helps if everybody sees kind of their leader holding this thing and getting excited about it and mm. so that's when you know, again, it depends on the dynamic of the group um, for why I might pull this out of the bag of tricks versus something else. If you don't mind, if um, Evan, if you're in a big group, would you ever put something like that up on a bigger screen? For sure, to, yeah. And then I you're would, going through it. One of the things that, that we'll do is we'll just project this from the iPad straight to a projector that's up on the wall so people get to see what the person's looking at. Um, mm -hmm. 
Or you can even I have know. multiple people have iPads, and they can all be doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah, the great thing about all your experience here is that we have experience from you know small projects or projects where you have only one or two clients. Like in in uh, America case, right? You might just uh, be pitching one person or a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and in Evan's case, like he might need to talk to forty people and multiple committees. So it, it's a different strategy, right? Yep. What about you, Emily? Uh, what tools do you use? Yeah. So. Um, I loved that iPad app. I think that's great. I was sort of thinking as sort of an alternate um, way too. Often we have a lot of success by, um, and I'll try to share this here as well, by um, actually bringing the client out on the site and walking through with them. Um, so let's see. And bear with us uh, while we prepare here for the screen share. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so, for example, um, can you see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, um, for example, you know, we'll do actual physical mock-ups of um, projects within our um, within our office. So that's what you see on the lower right there. Is we're looking at sort of louver spacing. We actually physically built them and sort of attached them to our building so that the client could see what it looked like. Awesome. Um, and then on the right there, you see um, we took a lift out. This was a project we did out at Land's End, and then a little step stool. So getting the client out there to say, okay, you know, this is where the floor level is going to be. This is what your view is going to be. Um, but just that's to be great. out there on the site and really interact with it, I think, is really important, and to get them to really see what they're going to get. Um, and then on the left is a prototype we did of the um, glazing system for the Exploratorium. So the exhibit designers actually took this prototype that we made, which was um, just silk screen, so it was a little bit more portable, um, of a fritted glass material. So they actually you know, took it to the beach, you know, took it to their existing site, and sort of played around with it. So having um, also more of a hands-on approach in terms of the tools, I think, is, is also good. Oh, that's that's great. So it's like yeah. going back to physical <laughs> things, right? Like <laughs> the very analog side. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. But that's perfect for clients, and that's that's actually really great because that's something where you know, big or small firm, either one. That's I'm gonna use that one too. I'm learning a lot here. <laughs> this is great. Great. So, what other tools, uh, Evan? Do you want to share another tool with us? Okay, I can show you another iPad one. This one kind of blows people away. It's it's augmented reality, which is kind of a, a mouthful, but it's really fun. Um, let me sh uh, screen share again here. Um, it's going to come up eventually. Start screen share. There we go. Okay, so this one's called Augment. This is a free iPad app. They have kind of a monthly service that you can pay for to, to do this, but they do have a free version as well. And so what happens is, let me start up a reflector here again so you can see my iPad. And what this allows you to do is basically you can have a marker on the screen. Can we see it yet? No. So we see just, uh, just you know, the iPad and then a blank, yeah. uh, a black screen. Let me refresh it. Sorry. You know how this technology stuff is. You know, we're live, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's the yeah. fun part of there being we go. live. <laughs> okay, so so a lot of times we'll take our um, our models and we can put them, like, in front of them. So you guys are seeing, like, what I'm seeing through my iPad right now. And so this is a, the same 3D model that I was just showing you, but it appears to be sitting right on my desk, right? Huh. And so they can take the iPad and they can come down and they can look at their project and this kinda again freaks people out because they're um, they're looking through a magic window they're looking through an iPad and on the table is just this this piece of paper you know but but as soon as they look at it through the iPad it's there and so another thing you could do is you could you could grab a little tracker like this and you could actually sit it right on that and you could look at it that way as well and then last, you know, real quick here, is you can actually take a site plan. It's really sophisticated. And you can actually put the building on the site and move it to the right position so they get an idea of exactly what this thing's going to look like on the site wow. as they go around. And so, again, this is just, you know, really fun toys. It really makes a connection because this is more of um, as soon as they see this kind of thing, they're like, wow, these guys 
they're high tech, but they're also letting me drive it, and and they feel really involved in the project when they do things like that. So, that's the kind of thing that it's really fun. Wow, that's great. Will you post the links for these two um, iPad apps on our event yeah, page sure. when we're done with this? Yeah, for awesome. sure. It's really that's fun. Great. Yeah, anybody else that has, I, I think Evan has more tools here um, to show us. So before we, we let him show us some more, <laughs> do you, uh, Merrick and Emily, do you have anything else to show us? I can't really compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition. <laughs> Um, I had one quick thing. It's not nearly that cool, um, but let's see. I think you know one thing that's sort of um, that we think about a lot too is how to not only communicate the project, but how to communicate the design process um, and how we go about the design and what a client can expect um, as part of the process. Um, so here, for example, is something that we did uh, for the. Uh, I'm gonna stop you for a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now it showed up. I'm sorry. I was just seeing uh, a blank screen. Okay. Oh, go okay. ahead. So, um, just to sort of, I think it's important not only to document your process, but to be able to communicate um, to current and prospective clients about, you know, how it really works. Um, you know, site investigations, meeting charrettes, um, models, the set, you know, testing and meeting, but. Um, so figuring out ways to communicate that as well, I think, is also important. No, you yeah, brought up. I would say yeah. that we include that kind of stuff in all of our proposals. It's important to just show how you work, and mm -hmm. like Emily also said, bring people to your workspace. And even if it's a messy room, it doesn't matter. Like that's that's your process. Architecture can be messy, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's uh, definitely a good point. So I definitely want to um, go back to the topic of how you explain your work, um, but before that, let's let's uh, let's see some more of these tools from Evan that that he uses at his presentations. Do you want to show us another one? Okay, well, you um, do more. If you have I, have, I have one more. I, I okay. can show you um, again. I'll show you my my desktop here real quick. So here's a here's a 3D model. Are you guys seeing it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a 3D model that I made. This is actually not an architectural project um, per se. It's not a building, but it is a bunch of little buildings. And this was a, a model that I had built. And you can kind of see there's a lot of detail going on in here. Um, I even it's like an art piece. I even etched my signature into the bottom of it. So this turned into a 3D printed model. And so let me go back to no screen sharing and show you the final printed thing. So you can see here, this is made with just a, it's a $2,000 um, MakerBot Replicator 2, and it's a really fun 3D printer. And uh, it takes about, I don't know, about six hours to print something like this. But um, again, if you, this is the same thing as an analog model, but I wouldn't be able to build this much detail because my skills are totally gone now that I'm out of school. <laughs> but um, when you put something analog in your client's hands, it makes a huge difference. It, it's, it's just like you were saying earlier with materials, and if, you, if they can touch it and feel it, it creates more of an emotional connection, and that's really, I think, a huge part of a successful project is when they get so involved and they fall in love with it because they get to touch it and be part of that process. That's a huge deal. So that's 3D printing. That's... Um, we talked about this on one of our podcasts once, but you know, there's lots of information online. Uh, it's not as easy as the movies make it seem, but it's it's not too bad either. So um, it's really fun. I recommend it. You can get printers for $500 now. 3D printers that sit on your desk that can make stuff about this size. So that's really fun. That's, That's awesome. And I have a question for you from our audience, um, Evan. So let me read it right here. It says, what is Evan using to display his iPad on his computer monitor? Oh, it's an app called Reflector. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if I know the address right offhand. It's, it's Reflector uh, with a K? It's Reflector oh, with, a with, a, with a C. Oh, with a C, OK. It's airsquirrels.com. Oh, so and, maybe uh, um, I'll ask you to I've post that. It, but I thought, yeah, this is be, this can be perfect because you'll never be able to see what I see on my iPad unless I can get it on my screen. 
That's great. So uh, would you mind posting that for us on the event page after the Hangout? Yeah, no problem. That as well. Yeah. And is that app, do you know if that app is also for PC or just Mac? I believe it's for both, yeah. Great. OK. Um, so I have, OK, I have another question here. It says, anyone use, let me switch the screen here one second. Anyone use AutoCAD 360 to show a client drawings using their tablets? So does anyone use AutoCAD 360? I have used it, but I, I don't use it that much. I, I kind of prefer to just have PDFs on the screen, because then I can just mm. draw right on top of them. Mm. So if I'm on if I'm on my iPad, I'll use something like PDF Pen or GoodReader, something like that, and I can just draw right on top of things and make notes and then send it back to them or you know email them a copy. Mm -hmm. Great. How about anyone else here? I, th I think we've played around with it. Um, there's also a Revit model viewer that we've played around with a little bit through AutoCAD, um, and I think it's just getting it to run smoothly enough to where it's effective. And again, being able to draw over it, like Evan is, is, is useful. So, great. Okay. Um, so I think this is a, a good time to 